Hello, my name's Kat, or Catherine, and I'm a knitter based in Harvard. <laughs> oh, God, do it. <laughs> Ding ding, round two. Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat, this is Alex, and this is Audrey. And this is my little space on the internet where I have documented my knitting journey from project one through to now. Um, I still feel like a very new knitter, but I've loved the community so far and welcoming my husband into it. Hey everyone. Sorry about that. Mine. <laughs> this is Alex. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's gone wrong. Anyway, <laughs> if you know me, you know me. This is my space and I do chaotic things. If you're new here, this is a slightly different uh, version of the podcast. I every now and then ask Alex to come back and show his projects or share what he's been up to. And recently Alex has been working on his project, which we'll share with you now and also some natural dyeing. So we'll start with your project. We'll start with making two heads more chaotic than one. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex has kind of through my uh, looking into knitting history and reading about it and the projects I've been working on, but also your love of exploration and the wild, you've seen quite a few Gansies in your time and through it has decided to knit himself one. We talked a little bit about it before, but you're quite a bit further along now, aren't you? I'm getting there. I was hoping that I would get to the complicated bit before I showed anyone it again, but <laughs> actually make sure I can do the complicated bit. But yeah, I'm getting much further along. It's, I guess it's about 14 or 15 inches? 14 inches. Um, let's see if we can zoom, 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 I'll zoom. Do some close ups. So, this is the Ardmore Gansey or Ardmore Pullover by Kate Davies. And it's a bottom up. Gotta get my beans on toasting shop. <laughs> <laughs> Alex actually received his own collection of progress keepers and stitch markers for his birthday this year, including some dinosaurs and some iron brew. <laughs> Because um, I'm an adult. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're knitting it in the Ulysses by Derrera Natura. Correct. In a gorgeous sort of heathered blue. I will do some close-ups again, just so you can get, get a feel of the texture. Alex's knitting is incredibly neat. Um, and very, very tight. I am not very good at doing many stitches now. I used to get around in every now and then for him, but it's a little bit much on my wrists. <laughs> um, it's bottom up, which kind of threw you a little bit. It's freaking me out a bit, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Just because once I get to the... Well, basically, if you knit bottom up, you have to settle on your size before you knit it, really. Whereas if you sort of the top and go down like you did with the last one, then you can just stop whenever it's long enough, can't you? You've got a bit more wiggle room with... You can still adjust, but it is a lot more important that your gauge stays where it's at and keep your measurement. So we've actually every now and then been checking Alex's gauge and also referring back to the pattern and the schematic notes so that... and just double checking that from here to here is going to be right and that the length's going to be right because we're both quite short we're like small people verging on hobbits <laughs> <laughs> so we often i often have to adjust patterns but we're work and actually with this one from what we've keep going through we won't need to adjust it at all we might take hopefully not maybe half an inch off the length of the body but we might not even because it will sit nicely just below your t-shirt line, won't it? That's the plan. Hopefully. <laughs> but it is quite, it's quite a scary way to do it, I think. Just because of how many hours I'm putting into this, I mean, they, this is not even 
half, well, it's probably half of the body now, or a bit more maybe? Um, probably half. Yeah, over half, I'd So say. this is about 28 hours of knitting now. Which I think is not so bad, cons but yeah, very neat. I think um, the reason that I encouraged Alex to do this one, A, because it fitted what you wanted in it being a lighter weight jumper, because you're a bit funny about having dense iron weight fabric. Um, cheekily, in a way, because Alex is going to have to commit to doing the body before he gets to the bit that's a bit more complicated, he's already committed and put in that much work that you're less likely to give up doing the cables oh, if see. you struggle a little bit. So it's a, <laughs> a little bit, but I think it's much less off-putting if yeah. you did, you know, the first 15 rows of the yoke and were kind of like, oh, this is just... And then it would become a project maybe that I did and then gave to you. But then the tension and the gauge would be completely different and we'd be playing a little bit more. So hopefully... Yeah. But a couple more inches and then you get to the... Yeah, like one, one and a half inches to go and then I get to the complicated bit. I say complicated bit, it looks complicated. I've no idea how you knit it yet. I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it. <laughs> Which is quite nice, I think. It's yeah. quite exciting. Got some learning to do still. But, so but then I'll have a jumper, so it's great. Which goes really nicely with what you're wearing. Yeah. Excited to wear it. <laughs> you could now. <laughs> might, might look a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> Little tube top. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't judge you. <laughs> um, so you should talk about your natural dye. Yeah. Then. You can talk. Don't you can uh, explain what I did. So, <laughs> two two weeks ago, we we struggled to remember when it was, but I think it was two weeks ago because last week we were at the moors. Um, Alex booked on booked onto a course with the Edinburgh Remakery, who are I think it's a place that I really would love to visit and I hope to in the distant future, or not too distant future really, um, where they really focus on reusing, recycling and sort of refurbing things. And I mean anything from sofas to computers to visible mending on clothing. And I just think it's a really, really good cause and the prices are really very affordable or very reasonable. In fact, your course, I think, was it £25? I think it was £20. It was a two-day course. Two days, so it was two hours each day, I think, wasn't it? A yeah, or three? yeah, two hours each day. -ish. And you got Maybe sent... Maybe two and a half. Um, you got sent some bits to play with. Elastic bands, some... Fabric. Fabric. Some turmeric for dyeing. Uh, a tile for making patterns. Really pretty tile actually. It's it is quite lovely. A, it's become a really nice coaster. Yeah, I'll put it I'll <laughs> put a picture of the coaster <laughs> over my face probably. Um and it was really like it I got to listen and not I didn't take part, I didn't really do anything I, other than just earwig um while I was knitting away. Um and the tutor I can't remember her name. Her Instagram is Eco Rosa. I forgot her name as well. I'm terrible with names. I need to meet someone like 15 times before I remember their name. <laughs> yeah, he had no idea who I was for months. Um, she also does <laughs> a lot of... She does a lot of di natural dyeing, but also um, a lot of, like the Edinburgh Remakery's ethics. She reuses, recycles and encourages less throwaway items. And I bought... I don't often buy things like I'm quite reluctant and frugal when it comes to spending money um slightly different with yarn but even then I'm still try to be you know very much live within our means and these were very reasonable but I got a matching scrunchie and a face mask from her because the the fabric that she uses is entirely reused from other items or offcuts from garments that she's making for people um it's a really nice little shop and I've got to say maybe I've got a funny shaped face but this is the best fitting face mark that I've, I've mask that I've had 
and it's living in my dice bag that <coughs> means that I can throw it into the bottom of my rucksack um, and it's not going to get icky. Not that I have an icky rucksack, but you know, treats, biscuit crumbs. <laughs> anyway. That's where she's been hiding all the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> so you started on day one. With... So the, sorry, the yeah, yeah. but yeah, you... the reason I booked onto the course, I mean, there's a few reasons really. Partially, it's just something to do on a weekend while we're all locked down, but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Kat already knows how to die. She's done quite a few natural dyes and yarns and things, but I thought it'd be good for me to learn from someone who does it for a living um, and then maybe learn some little tricks and tips, things like that. Um, also, I've got... Well, I've had some old t-shirts laying around, white t-shirts that were probably going to become rags for <laughs> for the car or something, or char probably not even good enough to send to a charity shop. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like wasting clothing or getting away, with getting rid of it if it doesn't need to be um, disposed of. So I thought I'd try to do a bit of natural dyeing. Um, also some yarns has that thought we could make more interest in. Um, and then another reason is that I've often through my work have things that are out of date, herbs and things that just get put in the bin, unfortunately. Um, so it's again, certain things, it's another way to experiment and see if I can get a use out of them when there is no other use for them other than compost, I suppose. It's really nice. I suppose we don't... I mean, it would be lovely, and I was actually talking about maybe starting to compost just just this week, but it's difficult with our amount of the space that we've got, but I think that's something that we'd like to do. But if we can reuse it in a way before using yeah. it in the compost, it would be really cool. Yeah, so uh, I did... So first of all, I used the turmeric dye, or oh, it was just ground turmeric that you'd get in a, um, you probably all have it in your cupboard, I suppose. Um, and that was sent to me from the Edinburgh Remakery. Um, so I did a little test it on some fabric. I think this is cotton fabric, something. Like um, just a little tie dye square, just to focus. Um, just to kind of test it out and see what the colour would come out like and really impressed actually, really bright, vivid. It's so happy. Yeah, it's happy colours, isn't it? Very happy colours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was the first test and then I used the same dye bath to do a couple of skeins. Um, one is a mohair and the other one I think is blacker yarns. Um, just, uh, they were both cream. <laughs> it's so hard to focus. Yeah, I'll put in footage. Okay, and then again, super impressed with how they came out. Um, so fun. Happy colours, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have a, a happy beanie. Yeah. Um, and then, where did I go from there? Your... T-shirt? Yeah. So. Also with turmeric, I did a tie-dye t-shirt, which is just an old, cheap, white t-shirt that needed rescuing from the bin. I really like how this has come out. It's quite cool, I think. I am a fan of tie-dye. Yeah. I've always been a fan of tie-dye, and it seems to be fashionable now and again, so every now and again I become fashionable again. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <That's> very true. <laughs> and then deeply un in, in waves. Oh, so this one wasn't just turmeric. So I first did it with turmeric um, and I liked it, but then I wanted to try onion skin. So any excuse to have a French onion soup. So I bought a sack of onions and uh, <laughs> got all the onion skins, which is amazing that things can be dyed with onion skins. There's hardly anything to them. They're just like little bits of paper. So then I over dyed this. 
So first with the turmeric, then secondly with the onion skin. I like it a lot. And Alex also did one for me. <laughs> so he over dyed my Jesse May's framework bralette, which I only recently finished that was sort of a, a, a really light pearly grey. And it's come out probably one of my favourite colours, to be honest, that I don't wear kind very of golden, often. golden, isn't it? But yeah, it is golden and almost like the colour of thread in, you know, classic denim jeans. So I'm looking forward oh, yeah. to doing like matchy matchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so you don't wear like normal that. denim. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to Even wear it. Even the lacy bit on a Dr. Martin boot. Yeah, Maybe. it's a bit... A little bit. So this was also a onion skin tie-dye t-shirt. I just really like the kind of brown colour it comes out. I really like it. Yeah, tonally it's just lovely. Yeah. It's like a, they're all soothing colours. And um, yeah, save from landfill, I'm happy. Mm. For now anyway, but it's another story. <laughs> um, so, and then that was the onion skin. And then I had a bit of experimenting with... Um, so I had some herbs at work that were sent to me in 2017, um, some Mexican tarragon. So very out of date now, and then it just been sitting around doing nothing for forever. So I thought I'd test that out to see how it turned out. And it was quite a, it's not actually tarragon. I, I don't know the Latin name or anything. So I think you can find it. it's just Mexican tarragon. See if I can and it's very green in colour, but interestingly the dye came out brown, like kind of mushroomy brown, would you say? Yeah, a bit it's darker a little bit than... of a khaki tone to it. Yeah. Like a, but yeah, like a... So again, these were two kind of cream skeins of yarn, weren't they? Yeah, like these are the undyed versions. So yeah, really, really like how these ones have turned out. I, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> And there was still a bit of dye left. So I thought I'd throw something else in there after these had died. And then this is how it came out the second time. So completely different, but still tonally quite similar. Um, hide our faces. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's two dye dyes in the same two sets of skeins in the same dye bath Come everyone's on, getting hats for christmas <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh is that everything i dyed um you you have one one set that's damp here that you did this weekend oh yeah so now onto the red cabbage which turns out blue and kind of greeny blue <laughs> <laughs> super nice um really interesting that you can get these colors um and you can use mordants to kind of alter the colors a little bit um with red cabbage you can mix it with iron aluminium you can mix it with vinegar you can mix it with bicarb and it will all give you different results and what it turns out like it's super interesting but it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's dying of cabbage over a couple of days and has a pot of cabbage bubbling away for a couple of days knows that smell and it's not great. Yeah, I didn't forewarn our housemate, but then on Saturday morning <laughs> when I came down to oh, sorry. Thank you. make a cup of tea, I don't know why. I was very tired, but instinctively just lifted the lid and smelt it, and it was quite a way to wake up. These are so nice. And there is a, another batch that's still in a pan now, which I think is going to be even better. I have a few more t-shirts in there, so fingers crossed they'll turn out good. I will put in some footage of that, hopefully, as, as I'm talking right now. I'm not usually the best at that, and Alex often goes, you didn't put this bit in, but we'll yeah. do that. And hopefully they look awesome. Yeah. So I want to do more dyeing, definitely. And um, I want to experiment with maybe 
less common things. Um, there's different barks, there's fungi you can use, there's all sorts of things you can forage um, to dye things with. So yeah, I want to really experiment a lot more with that. I'm quite lucky with this space that we've got. And I'm sure many of you have naturally dyed. And if you have any things that are in particular, you know, that you love, I'd quite like to try gorse myself. I know that the flowers provide a different colour to the like the stem. Um, and that's flowering at, at the moment in the moors where we are quite heavily. So it might be the time to get some of that. Interesting fact about gorse. It is the only plant in the UK that flowers in every single month of the year. Yeah. So it's always yeah. flowering, I guess. It is. They, yeah, to protect itself from the insects. Because everyone loves eating it, apart from Alex, <laughs> who recently tried a flower for the first time and, <laughs> safe to say, did not enjoy the flavour. <laughs> not recommended. <laughs> so, is that... Yeah, the current batch that's in there now, what did you do that you didn't do? You, you cooked this blue one, you cooked cooler. Or you... Hotter. Butter. Cooler. cooler. Yeah, yeah, cooler. So when you're making a dye, you basically just want to soak your plant material or whatever you're going to dye with overnight. I had read something on the internet, don't know if it's true, that if you soak cabbage cool in cool water, it will extract more of the blues. And in hot water, it will extract more of the darker shades and the purples. So I thought I'd do a little experiment and it sort of seemed like it had done it like that, but the cold extraction didn't really extract very much compared to the hot extraction. So it might be just that one way takes a lot longer or doesn't fully extract things. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more experimentation to be done with that. Very fun. It is like kitchen sorcery. Yeah, and I'm wondering about even extracting not just in water, in maybe an alcohol solution or something. I know, like with tea, if you you can extract tea with different things like alcohol, then it will bring out completely different compounds than water will. So that's exciting. Something to experiment with. I'm yeah. Sure, there's some natural dyers amongst you that have got some fun little tips or interesting things that have worked well that you've tried dyeing with. I'd love to hear it. So I think we'll do some questions. Questions? Happy to answer some questions. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm going to get this. Well, the first one was Tell us about your latest natural dyeing adventures. Oh, because... I think I've covered that already. <laughs> yeah. The second one was, have you ever visited Norway? No, I haven't, but I would really love to visit Norway. Um, assuming that whoever asked the question was from Norway, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah I'd love to visit Norway. Um, I've got kind of a dream of driving to Norway and Maybe doing a loop up Norway and down Sweden or vice versa. Um, yeah, it looks like the most beautiful place in the world from photographs I've seen. I guess you have a lot of wildlife there too. Maybe like moose and bears and <laughs> reindeer and wolves. <laughs> Be a liability. Yeah. It's like the Canada of Europe, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Actually. And you see the northern lights in the north, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot more to Norway too. I don't know too much about it. You've been to Norway. Yeah, I only spent sort of 72 hours there. Was that for a knitting? That was the second knitting show I ever got to go to, which I'm really grateful that I got that opportunity to go. But it did mean I didn't see too much of Norway and not any of the nature particularly, apart from on the sort of the drives in and out of from the uh, Train station, I want to say. No, airport. It was the airport. Mm. But it was beautiful. Yeah, it, it was had a really morning. nice feel. The city itself of Oslo just seemed to have such a nicer pace and spaciousness to it that London doesn't have. And 
Yeah, there was no judgment for my my yoga in the park antics at six in the morning. Yeah, no one judged me. I'm not not particularly well travelled really, but I have been to Denmark, which is kind of close to Norway, I think, isn't it? I think it might even border Norway, but my geography is rubbish, so <laughs> it's better than mine. <laughs> Please excuse me if I'm wrong. I think that. Um, more just a comment, but it's really awesome to see other men knitting. Trying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she asked, how are you finding natural dyeing? Yeah, um, great. Yeah, really. It's just another way to be creative, isn't it? And I am looking forward to, um, yeah, like I said before, trying dyeing with different things. There's a place quite locally where a lot of dyers green weed grows. It's a plant which you can obviously dye with. I mean, it's in the name. Um, and I'd like to try that. I'm, I'll, I'll need to get in touch with whoever owns the land it's on though, because I think it's quite a rare plant. I'm not sure, but I don't want to go around just picking things from the wild willy nilly without asking for permission or making sure that there's actually enough of it to still grow or I don't want to kind of hurt any wild plants or anything. <laughs> there's a bit of a, not with the way that uh, the very few wild places left in this country are being treated recently, so yeah. Yeah, we're hoping to get, well, I say we, uh, personally I'm hoping to get some litter pickers because the, or at least some gloves that I can com commit to wearing while litter picking because it's just getting a bit sad in our local park. But anyway, on a happier note, on a happier note. where do you see or wish, wish is a good word, your knitting journey going? Well, I think I've got to about there. <laughs> um, I really want to get this done. I really want to get this jumper done. Um, and then probably just another jumper after it. I'm kind of thinking knit this Gansey. It's kind of more of a Gansey themed jumper, isn't it, really? Um, I probably want to do like an actual traditional Gansey from maybe from one of the fishing ports close to where I'm from um, after this and have like a a real kind of thick uh, traditional, traditional one. Gansey, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I quite like the idea of that. Yeah. I quite like the idea of historical knitting. I know Kat's done a quite a bit of it now or shared some of it. Um, I, yeah, I like the idea of that. Um, I don't know. Did Vikings knit? Yeah. Maybe there's some yeah. really old patterns to do or something I'll teach like that. You, well, quite fun. We could teach each other learn now binding together, which is more even the one needle one. That's like making fishing nets, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, to answer the question without waffling for eternity, um, <laughs> I want to finish this jumper first and foremost. And it's already about 28 hours in. I'm expecting that it's probably going to be more like 100 hours before I finish. So kind of cross that, cross the next hurdle when I get to it really. And yeah, see what's next after this. See where it takes you. More just enjoying the journey. Which is what I'm about. But do you have a, this kind of might be the same you might want to answer in the same way, maybe, but you might not. You might surprise me, which would be cool, or not. Um, but do you have a dream knitting project? I would really like a hoodie. I think I've spoke about it before, haven't I? A knitted hoodie. Yeah, I, I do really. Yeah, a hoodie. I would. If you're gonna do a hoodie, I would absolutely love to get you yarn from like Northumberland or near from where you're from. Yeah, I mean, if, local if project. yeah, I suppose if we're talking dream projects, I would like to, like Kat, go and see the sheep or the 
the goats, maybe shear it myself, spin it, probably not spin it myself, I'd but maybe, maybe. You could heckle me while I spin it for <laughs> you. <laughs> and then do it that way, dye it myself, maybe with some unusual herb that I foraged, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would kind of, I would like to go down that route really. I've really enjoyed a couple of times we've been to farms to, well, farms to see sheep and things and farms that grow plants which we could die with as well. I know of a couple, I've got a close friend with one. That, that recently, which was the plant matter that I used to dye my spring intentions, which finally made its way to the intended recipient. This weekend and I got a picture so I'll put that up now of my dear grandmother who might never see this <laughs> hopefully not because I haven't asked her permission yet but I promise I'll ask before I put her <laughs> face on the screen <laughs> it's very sweet um and you answered that already which was what techniques do you need to learn to accomplish your dream loads by the sound of it yeah all of them basically which is kind of cool yeah. I would love to learn to shear. I think I actually even said that last episode, but that's up there on dreams to just roll around. I know shearers don't roll around the floor with animals, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's probably a lot of hard work, actually, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that would be that would be good, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Ooh. This one takes us away from knitting. Um, what is your favourite tea country? Oh, tea country. And um, favourite tea country. So one thing about tea is that every single place where tea grows, traditionally, let's say, um, is beautiful. I can't think of a single tea place that a tea growing country that isn't a beautiful, usually mountainous place. Um, now there's a lot of little exceptions, not not to beauty, but there's a lot, lot, a lot of little places that grow tea that you might not think of being a tea growing country. So it sort of depends on the question, really, because there's places in Europe that grow tea that I would really love to visit. Um, Oh, the question does a does then ask which place would you like to visit for the tea culture? Uh, that's a, Ooh, again yeah. a different question. Yeah. So, okay, I'll start yeah. with my favorite tea growing. So let's just my favorite teas come from China. Um, my favorite teas come from a place in China called Wu Yi, um, and they make like teas which are kind of often called rock teas. Um, and they have a really rocky soil there. Um, and you get like a nice mineral quality to the tea. Um, also some super famous teas come from that region. Um, and the style of tea, the slightly roasted fire teas from there. Yeah, I really like them. What was the next question? Place I'm to visit. On. No, you, I, it is. Like, <laughs> I'm like, Tell me more. If I could sit like this, I would. A place to visit for the tea culture. For the tea culture. So again, China would be the place with the most history. Probably though I'd like to visit Japan the most for tea culture. Um, yeah, probably Japan. It's quite super interesting. They've got a blend of the most traditional historical tea culture mixed with the most cutting edge, technologically advanced tea culture. And they, they do everything well, really. Um, out of the tea, the places that I buy tea from through my work, I might choose to visit Vietnam or Nepal. So I really want to go to Nepal, I really want to see the mountains. Um, which I know if you go to Darjeeling you can actually see the Himalayas from there. So maybe there. Basically I want to go everywhere the tea comes from. 
<laughs> and waffling. Because, yeah. yeah, there's not really a straightforward answer to that question. There's not a straightforward answer to many things. Yeah. No one's asking you yes or no questions yet. Um, or Scotland. I mean, Windy Hollow Tea Farm in Scotland is one of my favourite places on earth, so... Just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favourite knitting technique? I mean, I don't know many knitting techniques, but I think... It's a toss-up between fish lips kiss heels because it has a hilarious name <laughs> or steaking because that's like the most the idea of spending 30 hours knitting something and then cutting it in half is <laughs> that's like a, that's extreme that's adrenaline knitting isn't it <laughs> so that, that's where you turn knit, knitting into an extreme sport or the technique where you just pass it to the left and say, oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. One of those. Mm. I just like doing straightforward um, stockinette or knit stitch because then I can just tune my brain out of everything. And bits like meditative, isn't it? So maybe that's my favourite. This next question I'm going to not butt in. But it's for us both. How did you two meet? Um, we met working at a festival. I used to do, we used to kind of do backstage areas at music festivals. Um, Kat would be there serving coffee from a 1960s camper van, the VW camper van. I would be there kind of setting up bars and tents and looking after stock and kind of just generally running little backstage areas and yeah that's how we met really swapping coffee for cocktails yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was how we met yeah it was really really fun that, that summer in particular was when the olympics came to the uk oh yeah and uh so whereas previously because i'd been there for maybe three or four years before prior they had um it would only be for a couple of weeks, maybe four weeks at a maximum, that the Hyde Park kind of turned into a venue. But this was sort of eight or nine weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it? a whole summer, yeah. And it was intense, but it was really quite fun. It was strange to see how London went from this crazy intense place to suddenly quite quiet, I would say. It's like travelling in and out of London, it's like everyone that wasn't part of the Olympics kind of like left London out of fear that it was going to be crazy and it was really nice London yeah. was peaceful it was kind of sunny most of the time there was a few weeks where Rain. it was just like torrential but it was a really fun summer yeah lots of ridiculous shifts and yeah. I saw Alex pushing some kegs looking, <laughs> looking all strong don't even go for a good lift one of them now <laughs> Get you a mini one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who's this? I don't know if you. Who's your knitting hero besides me? You, of course you. Not allowed to say me. What about your mum? No. She, if she ever finishes <laughs> that jumper, my mum's been knitting my sister a jumper for probably four years, maybe, maybe more. And she's got most of the way through it, but. It's become a running joke, hasn't it? I, every time I, every time I say, "Let's get how it's coming along." Yeah, every time. <laughs> <laughs> They're very funny. Um, would love to know more about blending tea. What is your favourite thing about it? Um, probably the smells. It's so when you get. I mean, we. I work with tea in a very small way. I'm not. I'm not like PG Tips where I'm getting truckloads of tea. But when you open a packet of tea that's maybe five kilos, the smell that you get is completely different from opening a little packet of tea. It's kind of so powerful, especially some of the kind of Japanese green teas and things they. They smell like fresh mangoes and things like that, even though they've got no 
they have no flavouring in them or anything. So yeah, I mean, I think I work with probably between 80 and 100 different teas. And they all have like different smells. They all feel different, they all look different. Yeah, I just find it fascinating. Um, yeah, is that a good answer? Yeah, it's this, like... Yeah, it's quite... Well, I like tasting tea as well. I mean, part of my job is to drink tea, which is pretty good. That's <laughs> pretty good if can't, you ask me. Can't complain. <laughs> I can I can smell the differences to what Alex has been doing. The obvious one is when Alex has been blending Earl Grey and this just bergamot dream walks in. <laughs> You're so used to it that you can't really smell yeah, it. Yeah, I like, can't smell it on my clothing oh, anymore. Earl Grey day. <laughs> it's lovely. It's really, really nice. But you can't. I can smell other ones too, but that's obviously the yeah, most. Yeah. But it's... I guess it answers that quite good. Yeah. I'm good at this. Um, ah, uh, guess this is sort of a. It, it wasn't worded as a question, but your appreciation of knitting is beautiful, and really appreciates it. But uh, uh, this person's boyfriend always appreciates her knitting, but she's yet to get in knitting. Any, anything on that? Um. The best, the thing what got me doing it is just having something really simple to do where you can see your progress, so a hat basically, um, where you can just go round and round and round and round and it's, it's as soon as you do it enough that you can just get into the rhythm of it, you can kind of watch TV and have, I guess a lot of people probably it's really bad, but a lot of people probably will watch Netflix or whatever, but they'll be also sitting playing with their phones, especially after like a long day at work. And I find that it's just a, a much more relaxing way to kind of be, just sitting. Yeah, I, t I do that. Yeah, that's a um, really good way of putting it. Or maybe if you commit to knitting a gift for someone probably a good yeah a good way in yeah but I'd go with the the relaxing angle I mean <laughs> my eyes are getting heavy around doing this <laughs> <laughs> like little Audrey's he's rotated briefly it does make me really sleepy knitting it's a good way to get to sleep for me yeah you yeah you you will fall asleep a lot quicker if you've been knitting versus if you've not been knitting, yeah. usually because of phones or TV. Yeah. Or... And actually, this is a similar thing, but would you recommend a hat, cowl, or scarf, and what needles to encourage another husband to knit? Uh, I can't really comment on that because I've only... I've crocheted a scarf, but I've only knit a hat out of those items. And in terms of needles, I've only ever did it on circular needles. So again, I can't really comment on that. I like the metal ones better than the wooden ones. Yeah, you find that it's a, you prefer, because Alex knits tighter, it, it's more slippy. I like quite a sharp needle as well, actually. Yeah, my higher, higher sharps are the Alex's preferred over the higher, higher standard needles. <laughs> But I can't really comment other than that, I mean... I would avoid a scarf, if I'm honest. My my suggestion, I would avoid a scarf because it's a lot of work for a, a new knitter. A hat is a good way to go if you're confident that you'll be able to teach increases or decreases, depending which way up you're doing the hat. Um, but a cowl, a very simple cowl, maybe ribbed, or just stockinette would be a very good way because you would not need to do any decreases or increases or anything and size kind of is even less of a matter than if you're doing a hat but more often than not hats have been more practical for someone like Alex so it totally depends and needle size again 
if lend lend needles and maybe swatch or don't swatch and just I'm, I'm gonna say swatch but do what feels right and lend needles rather than buy needles specifically if you if you've got that option I think um, I think so many questions I know we've only got two left I think yes this is really difficult um, oh no there's not what is your favourite plant to dye with? Um, again, I haven't done that many, really. Uh, yeah. So, I'm still at the experimentation stage where I'm going to figure out what that, the answer to that question is, I think. Well, there's a lot of things that I'm planning to dye with this year, but with it being the very, very, very beginning of spring, there's not much... There's not much uh, access to anything fresh at the moment, too, other than things you can get in a supermarket. I've planted a lot of seeds in our very, very small garden. Gar garden. <laughs> we don't have any soil in our garden other than in planters, unfortunately, but they are all filled with soil and seeds for things that could be used to dye things with. So let's see what the summer brings in that in that sense. Um, well, update in a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, really difficult. And my, and my brain's like, it's so always so, Nicole, why have you asked this? <laughs> uh, what's your favourite song? My favourite song? Oh, no. It's a really difficult question, isn't it? I mean, it's very mood dependent, but I guess there are songs that I've gone back to over and over again over the last, say, 20 years. Um, but I've got sort of a, like a, what would you say, like a, like I have an emotional response to or an emotional attachment to. So there's a song by Led Zeppelin called Fool in the Rain. It's one of my favourite songs. Also one of my favourite drum beats to play. Um, I guess my dad used to listen to it, so it's just a really good song. Maybe that's one that I always go back to. Um, it's <laughs> such a hard question. What about Agadu? Agadu, Black Lace. <laughs> Bring you nothing but joy. Which happened to be <laughs> our first dance after we got married by accident. Sort of. I mean, we didn't really have, yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult question, isn't it? Really hard. I mean, I, I listen to all sorts of different kinds of music, but um, yeah, that's just too much of a difficult <laughs> question. And then the last question. This is quite nice considering we sat and watched birds all night. What's your favourite bird? Called an eagle. <laughs> and how how long will it be until you see one in your probably life? my whole life Aww. so we I mean did we talk about this before I feel like every, I feel like I always talk about this but <laughs> spending have now spent in my life probably three weeks in the highlands of Scotland actively scanning the skies for eagles and I've never seen an eagle it's only three weeks. There was a possible sighting. It's very far away. It could have been a buzzard. <laughs> That's your... You've got three creatures that you'd like to see in the next year or so, haven't you? You've got a list. Yeah, I mean, I want to see them all, really, but... I've, I've never seen an adder in the wild. I've never seen an eagle in the wild. What's the third one? There was three. I can't remember. It was a different bird, I thought. Probably a white-tailed eagle and a golden <laughs> eagle, I guess. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. That it's a bit of an obvious answer to what's your favourite bird, isn't it? I feel like I should have went with something really obscure than... Chick-Chat. Chick-Chat's got a good name. Yeah, we watched a really good video last night and I'll put a link to that as well. That if you're interested in learning British birds in particular... It's a really nice way of seeing them 
in 3D because it was like someone had just recorded a bird feeder, but it wasn't. It was just above it. So birds were flying in, sitting for a, a few seconds and then flying off and the name flashes up. So we were kind of playing guess who with British birds, which really helped me because whilst I've seen a lot of birds and Alex is really good at pointing them out, it's not very often you get to see them in enough detail to really be able to go, oh, that's the difference between a linnet and a dunnock, which we can now do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a favourite bird sound. So a top tip, if you, if you want a little giggle, go and search for the sound that an eider duck makes. Oh. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good, good impression. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Um, and I think, unless you have anything else you'd like to say, we'll, we'll finish it on the eider duck chat. Um, no, let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Hope everyone's happy. Hope everyone's looking forward to the summer. Do you have Southern Hemisphere watchers? Yeah. It's always summer there anyway, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of extra recording tomorrow, so this might be a slightly longer episode. You will know at this point. I don't know at this point now. But I will see you in a second for more... Waffle. More waffle about what <laughs> I've been knitting. Um, but I will keep it nice and short, just sharing what I'm knitting on right now. So with that, I will see you in a moment. Bye. <laughs> uh, hi again. This is really strange. It is now Monday. Um, I have had quite a busy day so far, which has been really nice. Little Audrey isn't sat here anymore. She's uh, snuggled down on her sofa and has just given me the the look and done this. So she's covered her eyes <laughs> um, from the light and to try and sleep because I'm apparently disturbing her. So what I've been working on is really exciting. If you've been here for a little while, you will have seen even when this pattern was released, I was really excited about it. And it's the Boscula by Marina Skewer. And I'll show you the bag first quickly because this is really special too. But this was a lovely gift from Maggie May, who is the wonderful host who is a lot of fun very relaxing but very informative to watch um, of the Sonder knitting podcast and there's a song by Neck Deep called Sonderland and they're unrelated but every time I hear it I sing that song and I've had that song in my head for weeks because of Maggie's lovely podcast company but this is one of the sweetest things and one of the most like heavy duty not like heavy but like it's got this like canvas base then it just stands up on its own and it's a amazing um but living in it is my boscular by marina skewer and i've got pretty far um i started this tuesday afternoon last week and, and i have had to slow myself down i have worked on a few other projects um but this is what i've mostly been working on and i love it i opted to do the second size which gives me quite a bit more uh, ease um, than sometimes I go for and I'm really excited about that to be honest I think it's gonna be a good one for my linen items that I love so much so I might do it slightly more cropped than Marina suggests but we'll see um, and I might it might be that I'm just enjoying knitting it so much that I do go the full length but I've, I feel like um, it's just a bit better on me I am quite I'm very short, um, so I think it's going to be cropped, I think. Um, Marina's sizing's wicked. Uh, Marina's short rows were... Sorry, I keep playing with my hair. I was playing with it yesterday. I need to... I should have put it in a braid scarf today. Um, the, like, the clearest short rows? I've not seen anyone write them like Marina has. I'm sure people have. But it was just so obvious once that it, it, I've seen it that way. Um, so that was really, really fun um, to do. And they look lovely. And yeah, so far I am, like I said, really enjoying it. This colorwork yoke is dangerously Moorish. I definitely, given the time and the space, could have knit it in 
an afternoon or a day with no problems but I I really worked hard to try and spread it out over three days and then I would say like maybe four inches of the body I knitted last night while playing Dungeons and Dragons which was really really fun it's a knitting based group um so that was it was really nice to have something uh stocking it to work on I can do rib patterns and patterns but I try to ensure that I've got something that is gives me enough to do with my hands that keeps me engaged but also doesn't distract me in any way from the game which is really fun and the yarn that I'm using is something really really special that I will hopefully talk more about next week um, but this is the closest fleece to home that I've ever got to use um, uh, and it's fleece that Alex and I actually went and uh, picked up uh, a little while ago now and had spun um, and it's really special it's uh, I'll talk about it more um, because I am very aware that I think we've probably been talking for nearly an hour between us now but I just wanted to share it these are the natural colors completely undyed and yeah so this is a very special item for me and I cannot wait to wear it but also I do not want to finish it so I might be nursing it for another few weeks at least hopefully hopefully I'm gonna keep trying to uh, uh, work between a few of the other whips that I've got um, I've got some works in progress that I haven't quite decided what to do with so I've got a piece fleece jumper that I'm, I'm half, still half torn whether to sneak or, and turn it into a cardigan or to rip it back and re-knit it into a cardigan or just keep it as a jumper because it's going to be a beautiful jumper. I have my tulip or flower top that I was talking about last episode which amazingly you and Fly had an 85 gram uh, hank left from their 2006 Shropshire Fleece DK. Um, hopefully I can get sleeves that are more what I want out of that and is that it for whips? I think so. And nevertheless I am going to leave you to it now. I'm going to pop in some footage from one of our excursions. Um, I can't remember which one I'm going to put in but you will see very shortly. I hope that you do enjoy some of the nature chit chat and chit chat the nature views um, and maybe some sounds um, I guess before I go quickly the top that I was wearing uh, just previously was my ranunculus in black mohair which was a mohair from drops and I believe that only used 30 grams of mohair which is uh, ludicrous and then this one is my anniversary sweater knitted in let lopi and I do have all the colors listed on my Ravelry I did do my best to do that and yeah I really hope you're well I feel so grateful to be part of this you know community and space the conversations that have been having like happening recently have been so nice and so wonderful and I feel really quite inspired by so many of the people around me um, and I'm not sure how but I would love to do a video or a bit of a chat about those people in particular and those small businesses, small makers that are kind of really wonderfully lifting each other up. It, there's no sense of, I don't know, it's just lovely and I feel a bit uh, teary and cosy. Um, so yes with that i really hope you have a lovely week i hope you make some time to look after yourself look after your loved ones whatever that might be taking it slow going out for a walk making sure you drink enough water in the day i know i say it all the time but those tiny little things make such a huge difference to us as a whole and i always say that if you've not if your cup's not filled you've not got much to you've not got much or excess to give so fill up your cup as much as you can um, even if it's having a cup of tea which is exactly what I'm about to do and yes 
I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much for joining us and have a lovely week.